All right, folks, welcome back. Dave Fleming here, and I am thrilled to be joined by a volleyball superstar turned pickleball lover, Casey Patterson. Welcome to the booth, brother. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for having me. Feels weird with shoes on right now. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> and a shirt. <laughs> so... Uh, Great to have you guys here. Uh, great to have different perspectives. So what have you found as you've transitioned from volleyball to pickleball that uh, has actually helped your pickleball game from your volleyball? Yeah, the biggest thing I feel like is that like the team dynamic and flow and the angles and like kind of those three quarter speeds in between, like hitting as hard as you can and, and, and dinking really soft. It's like learning the nuance of all that stuff and how you shift together. It's all exactly the same almost in beach volleyball. So there you go, folks. We see the tennis players coming, but beach volleyball, we've seen baseball and football today. I love it. Let's play pickleball. And there you see oh. Tyler Wren. He's got quick hands. He has a unique grip. You see the index finger straight up the back of the paddle. Yeah, excited to see what these Utah boys are uh, bringing to the table here. Ooh. And Todd Foch says, hello, everybody. I'm ready to go. <laughs> Such a great little little nugget there. The approach down the middle, backhand. Ugh. Oh, and Grant flicks it just deep. Foch is a D1 tennis player, played at Weber State up there in the Utah area. Oh, generally a little offense here. This is nice. I do. I, you know, Ren plays a very up-tempo game. Doesn't love to stay at that kitchen line. Has unique grip, which is hard to read sometimes. That is exhibit A of he's not going to hang out and dink all day, Casey. <laughs> <laughs> Enough of this. Just wide off foot inside out. And then the unique, the two seed here are playing together, but uh, not with their usual partners. Do you ever have that, Casey, where you have your longtime partner and someone's not available and you got to sort of learn a new that, guy, even yes. though you're very talented together? Yeah. How did you sort that out? That actually happened in the last event we played in New Orleans. Uh, I don't really have a full-time partner this year for the first time ever. Picked up uh, Phil Dahlhauser, 2008 gold medalist. Yes. Not a bad pickup. <laughs> no. you know? Yeah. We didn't train at all. He plays full-time disc golf and I play full-time pickleball and we ended up winning the event. We call it protecting the nest, keeping those young kids out as long as possible. Love it. <laughs> Go down to Nolans and take a take a championship. <laughs> exactly. I like it. Oh, it's so fun. One, two, one, two. Yeah, and sometimes it's just pure talent, you know, and trust. Yeah, we were like, oh look, we gotta live off this muscle memory and know that we put in, you know, a good twenty years of reps. So that's what Kohler and Johns are gonna have to do, and, and the good news for them is Colin is Without question, the best right side player in men's doubles. Kohler can play both sides, so he won't have to think about where he's going. And that is a ball and a combo that Johns is used to finishing, but Fode is not intimidated by this at all. In fact, maybe is a little too full of uh, confidence after that <laughs> flying Ernie attempt. This, this, uh, this surface is so good and grippy, he's just flying around. Oof. So Ren is going to go for it, and uh, saw an opening and just got too much of that one. Right 
I assume the sand can be different too, Casey, right? You talked about the grittiness of yep. this. Yep. Manhattan Beach, super deep sand. You go to Huntington, everyone's flying around. It's easier for people to play on the, the shallower surfaces because they've got more offense to create, where the deep sand is like where you're a true savant of the game. That's where like the true, like the OGs, we like the deep sand, make these young kids work hard. They've got to <laughs> manipulate the ball and carve it and use all different stuff, deal with the wind more because it's the net feels higher. So. I think that one thing I'd like to point out is like when we used to practice in Utah and then we'd go play in California, we would put the line deeper because here we're at right sea level, ball's dropping, it's a little bit uh, warmer, right? So they can manipulate a little bit more. I think why these guys are, Utah boys are able to kind of speed up so well right now is this ball feels great. Balls are dropping and moving. Yeah, no altitude to deal with, and uh, it is a factor. I mean, as we move around, the, the humidity from Atlanta yeah. from uh, a few weeks ago and Ren not happy with that one, and when a paddle is bouncing its way across the court, that usually means a timeout has been called. So, <laughs> yeah. Johns and Kohler, after being down early, have now jumped in front. Ren, Fote, trying to find what they can do to stop it. This is the PPA Tour. We'll be right back. All right, folks, we are back. Uh, that onyx paddle of Wrens that was bouncing across the court has been picked up. He's ready to return. See if they can settle in here. Ooh, what a play. Beautiful Ernie from Fote there. You know, Fote and Wren are playing their first pro tournament together, yet they play a lot of rec together in Utah. So uh, this is when they're keeping score here. Yeah, high level. Every time I've gone to Utah, that's kind of where I was really introduced to like a faster game. It's like, wow, it's really crazy. A lot of good players in Utah. And so many courts, they've done an incredible yeah. job. Every community's got a big yeah. complex. Yeah. Jammed up on that right hip. That is where you want to attack. Beautiful shot by Kohler there. Fote had it get caught behind him. It's just tough to deal with that. Effortless defense so from Colin Johns. Oh, the look away. Oh, the lob. Oh, the oh. Kohler lob, and he <laughs> handles the pace twice. The skillet. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> oh, saw a little bit of everything there. Call on with the no looky cookie, just looking away, fadeaway line. So good. Great point, great job by Fote and Wren to hang in with all that chicanery. <laughs> and that's the Tyler Wren pace. You see him sprint back to the baseline after that bring pace bring pace finish with that unique grip of his right hurry back and keep the momentum oh yeah right. can't serve <laughs> fast enough so a little momentum after the timeout they stopped it and then got a couple of their own so within one Kohler trying to reach in there, a little too far to go. All right, four, two. He's so good at those speed ups though. I, I think if I'm his partner, I'm just green lighting him all day. Oh. Ace or air, doesn't matter. Like just keep doing your thing. He creates so much. Yeah, and it's with a unique paddle and spin yeah. position. Yeah. Six, four, two. And that's that confidence you talked about what you did in New Orleans. Like, hey, just play free. Yeah, I was just going to say, this is the point in every match that I usually play, like a first round type thing. Guys hang around until about 10, 11, switch, and then, we, you know, we, we turn it on. You know what I mean? Like, and it don't have to say anything. It's just a feeling like, all right, let's go, you know? And so the game starts to slow down. You trust your shots. You start creating more opportunities and being a little bit more aggressive versus kind of, right now, you know, you're kind of processing and figuring out what these guys are going to do, right? Once yep. you get a little bit of some information, now you you full throttle.
Oh, a little flicky. And Fode has been caught on that little backhand dink. Sometimes just deciding, am I going to take that out of the air, off the bounce? Yeah, right at that right foot, too, where you're like, ah, do I get it? Yeah, such a good spot. Just so steady. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, and that's the combo that Colin loves, too. <laughs> he knows it's coming back there, and he got caught. That's the stuff I love the most that translates how, you know, AJ just kind of like resetting, scooping. It's so much like what I do because I'm the defender. And so it's just kind of like setting up plays, reading guys' body language, and then trying to execute when it get a little baby pop up or some spin I can roll off of. Yeah, it is. I mean, obviously in your sport, you can truly set up your partner, but in this sport, you can too. It just has to go through your opponent. Right. I think the other similarity, and you can tell me whether I'm wrong or not, is just that transition from offense to defense yes. that happens in your sport as well. Right. And the points and the people go nuts when that happens. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Especially on a long rally, tons of great opportunities, and then you finally get that chance to just close on a ball that's high enough and just unload, let everybody know what's going on. It's so <laughs> fun. Yeah, there's so many similarities there. A lot of trust with your partner, a lot of synergies in how you float and move together. All that kind of stuff is so, so similar that you know, for me, it's like, okay, I know what to do on the sand, but out here, like, what tools do I, do I put in place for those scenarios? That's why I'm like, Rob, I'm nunnery. I mean, you, you teach me yeah. what tools do I need in this scenario, you know? Oh, I love oh, it. that's way in. Kohler oh, didn't even lob. move. Mr. Lob didn't even move. <laughs> CJ comes flying in there and tracks it down, and Ren's going to keep oh. firing and a beautiful finish there. Sea level Cali ball, just nice and <laughs> squishy. Yes. I'm stealing that from UKC. I like that. Sea <laughs> level Cali ball, baby, <laughs> from the Utah boys. Ooh. Oh. Again, that's where just don't stick your paddle in there if you're the right side player with that backhand. It's just you think you're helping and you're just not because Ren, my, Ren my, was ready. Right. That's my biggest issue is because I have a 7-2 wingspan, I reach to that stuff when I shouldn't. And I'm like, I'm sorry. The long arms help, but they're also <laughs> always in the way because I can get to that stuff sometimes. <laughs> Yeah, that usually ends up behind the the right side player, and you know, right. My wingspan is three feet, so uh, <laughs> I wouldn't have even reached for that one. <laughs> nice finish by Kohler there, and that, this is the pressure they put on. Like you think, okay, I've seen some really yeah. nice balls from Wren and Folk, but here we are at game point. Yeah, I think these guys, you know, Colin and AJ have processed, they've gotten some information, and now they're confidently, you know, attacking a little bit more, and then these guys can feel that they're close. So it's like, okay, I'm going to over-attack. Yeah, so there's the uh, pressure that's put on. And uh, before we go to break here, you mentioned Rob Nunnery, your, your friend and mine, going through a couple surgeries here. Yeah. So shout out to our boy yeah. Rob Nunnery. Let's go, Rob. A speedy recovery, my brother. Yeah. All right. The two seed playing together, new. They're looking a lot like my boy Casey did down in New Orleans. <laughs> so we'll see if they can keep it going in game two. We'll be right back. All right, folks, welcome back. Colin Johnson, A.J. Kohler playing very solid. Ren and Fote were really bringing it, but uh, just that defense transitioning to offense. Impressive from Kohler and Johns in game one. Oh, wow, that was close. Nice matrix by Ren there. Neo. <laughs> There's the scorpion from Just. Colin Johns. Gets that tail of the scorpion up high. <laughs> and squashes it. <laughs> Folks, if the ball is down on your opponent's feet, get your paddle up. There's nowhere else the ball can go. Ooh, that was kind of cool. 
and didn't work out, but it looked cool. Yeah, AJ will get that body low and <laughs> flick it, and Ren was just like, okay, that's pretty and all, but here's a winner. <laughs> ATP oh. defended. It is incredible how the ATP used to be a winner all the time, and now it comes back most of the time. Uh, exactly. It's funny, like I'll dedicate an entire day to drilling just hitting or defending on both sides. And cause just because you're seeing it so much more now where it just stays alive, it's crazy. Yeah, and that's another thing when you are practicing and drilling, dinking, when you go cross court, you got to allow your partner to ATP and drills as well. Right. Because right. then you're going to get used to taking the ball too wide if you just don't allow that. <laughs> right. There's a ball that just literally sat on the net. Oh, Fo tried it. Jocelyn Davillier even jumping in. I've never oh. felt shorter here, folks. <laughs> <laughs> nice attack there. You know, Casey, when you play a team like this, and what is your mindset as the team that's the underdog going through? What would you tell these guys if you were coaching them? Like, okay, we're playing a great team, but what, what should we be doing? First thing I want to do is instill a lot of confidence in my guy and let him know that he has so many strengths that I trust. And so I'm, I'm okay with him kind of taking some chances to feel mentally free, to have that green light. Like, hey, green light on the things that we know you do well because I know it's going to create opportunity. Because now it's immediately, I've taken some stress off him, right? Now he's like, oh, my guy's letting me kind of just go on the dance floor and do my thing, right? And then I'm 100% going to gonna play a little bit more loose. I'm going to take some opportunities, and I'm okay with making an error. Um, that's the first thing I would do because I know that these guys are going to play a real steady game. And, and uh, wow, what a rally. Geez, sorry, I talked way too long there. But, yeah, that's the first thing I would say is, like, look, man, let's just trust what we've done and green light it here. And we'll know when we need to, s to slow down and, and, and control the tempo when we need to. Like that. You know, we'll smooth attack. Not going for the winner, just kind of keeping it going. Yeah, and I think that trust is just such a, such a big deal because as a partnership, you want to be able to play your game. Right. And if you're worried or, oh, my partner's in my ear a little bit, yeah. or you're getting the dreaded pickleball eye roll right. from somebody, yeah. you just can't yeah. play well. Like, look, I get, enough, I get enough of this at home when I don't <laughs> do the dishes. I don't need it here. <laughs> this is my happy place. Yeah, I think it creates a, a good dynamic. And that's something that I kind of pride myself on, on as a two-man beach player, that I was always the guy that was kind of the chameleon. Let, I'll let you do your thing, let you play to your strength, and then I'll kind of evolve around you and strengthen us as a team. So Ren and Fote get off to a little early lead here. And Fote's had just a, some errors on that backhand side at the kitchen line here, going for a little too much on those yellow balls or maybe even orange in the yellow plus red category. <laughs> and Ren has a similar problem, and that's these are the ways that you, when you are fighting against a team of the quality, of Johns and Kohler. So we're going to keep it here for a minute, Casey. We talked off air, but uh, your sport, like pickleball, has gone through some scoring changes yeah. as, as things have gone on. What have you seen? Share that with the yeah, pickleball we've, audience. We've gone through a big evolution of like a big court, similar to indoor, but on the beach, no antennas, to, all right, we add antennas. We're going to shrink the court in a foot and a half all the way around, right? So it's a little bit smaller and catered to more offensively uh, minded athletes. And then we went from side out scoring to rally. And what happens is when we did that, it was very hard to have a, a comeback to create some sort of tension 
Houston, right? Like, let's say a team's up 10-4 even in this. They can come back and win the set and go three. Absolutely. Where in rally scored, the game's over. And so we've gone through a buff bunch of different renditions of that. And so what we have been doing the last four years is rally score. And then on match point, we did a freeze where it's side out only. And there's been some of the most incredible comebacks. So we still got that cool, like, we can still root for the underdog, the team to come back and create some cool rallies and energy. Um, so there's a good balance. But the rally score is tough because if a team's hot, there's no chance in coming yeah. back. And just to be clear what you mean by freeze, does it freeze for both sides? Both or just sides, this? it's okay. frozen. There so you go. if we're like, let's say we're down four to 10, you know, and we're, we get the serve and we score, you know, six on our side, we don't have to, but then they side out like, all right, whoever's serving is the only team scoring. So it's kind of cool. It's a good hybrid of the two types of scoring. There's that vicious backhand volley by Kohler, if you drive the ball at him, it has got to be within an inch or two of the net, or you right. are going to eat it, or your partner, worse yet, is going to eat it. Oof. Just, you just Feeling don't free. know where it's coming from. <laughs> I love it. I think. You know, any sport in general is a balance of stress and anxiety, right? If you're, anytime I win a game, I'm offensively free and I'm going for stuff that I should and shouldn't because I feel free. And you could tell now after that first set, AJ's just like, all right, I'm gonna let it flow. Yeah, you get a nice flick winner and then a ball off the tape catches Tyler Wren and then a missed return. This oh. is very similar to game number one. It was tight around fives. Right. And then that separation has happened again. Yeah, there's something that happens when a team that you know you're kind of hoping to upset, when they start kind of going full throttle. And make every ball feels more like it's worth more than it is in a sense. So you're trying to do almost too much. So that's something that going up through the ranks on the beach, I would do is just try to really steady out my guys during this like period. Like, look, there's a lot of game left. Let's just go back to what we do. Let's, let's actually pick something that we can choose to focus on versus the score and what they're doing. Like, let's just work the middle. That's all we're going to talk about, you know? And then it frees up you to make some plays and be athletes here and there. Yeah, sometimes you just need, give me a spot to put the ball and I don't have to think exactly. about anything Give else. me something from my mind to focus on. And then when there's an opportunity, we can do our thing and we know what to do. But so there, like <laughs> there's the place that my partner, the booth, Casey Patterson, <laughs> dominates. That is the beach in the beautiful Pacific Open. It is Kohler and Johns putting on a show on the comeback trail and now way in the lead. We'll be back with the conclusion of game two here at the Select Medical Orange County Cup. Welcome back, everybody. Dave Fleming with pro volleyball superstar Casey Patterson. He loves his volleyball and he's hooked on pickleball. <laughs> so hooked. Oh. oh, and CJ goes for the two-handed attack in the middle and uh, he was told that will not be happening on our watch. State of Utah is defended. <laughs> oh, nice. There it is. Good time out by them. Yeah, and I like, you know, Foats had some problems with the backhand today, but there, kept the ball. The ball in front of him, the paddle in front, and just a nice smooth flick. Well done. I've noticed similar to volleyball here with there's a little bit of a crosswind or a breeze. Anytime the ball after it apexes and it starts to drop, spin or no spin, that's when the wind gets involved and drops the ball at the kitchen line or for a lob. And so it's, it's interesting because there's so many similarities that I've seen that you can kind of get real confident at the line if there's a little uh, tailwind and those guys are airing it up and I have more time to kind of roll. Yeah, it's interesting. If you have wind in your face, a lot of the people that throw the big third shot drops just throw it into the backboard of that and let the wind take it right yeah. at the feet. Oh. Kohler goes for the Ginsu level <laughs> cut there. Just deli thin. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. That's just too good. And so, so good. heavy off the forehand drive right there by Colin Johnson. And then his work was over, and we are at match point. 
Oh. And Fode again jumping for that backhand Ernie, but uh, Johnson Kohler, the two seed, just too good, too sharp. And Wren and Fode put some pressure on him again in that early stages, yeah. Yeah. but couldn't right. sustain it. Some good momentum for those boys, the two seed, to get going, to get flowing, got some touches. It's always a good first win because you never know. The guys different styles and what they're going to do, they can kind of surprise you. It's a good, uh, get some good momentum in round two. So Johnson Kohler looking good on center court. We will be back with more great pickleball action from the Select Medical Orange County Cup. This is gorgeous San Clemente, California, and Lifetime Fitness. And look, one of my senior pro buddies, Scott Crandall, getting some airtime here as he's warming up Jesse Irvin. She'll be on the court later today, as will Scott. We'll be right back. San Clemente!